Um, I want to talk to you tonight about a, uh, a concept which hopefully will appeal because it's, it's all about um, winning. It's something that uh, Sir Clive Woodward um, talked about with um, his experiences of the England, England rugby team. And again, as you've heard me speak before, different um, concepts that, that uh, Clive Woodward has put across, I think there's some elements that we can take, even though we're an endurance sport, we're not team sport. Um, I think there's quite a lot that we can we can take on board from from him. Um, I may have shown some of you this this quote before. Uh, so we are talking about winning, but not at all costs. And one of the first things I'm going to get across is that yes, we want to win. We want to be kind of like get, get the best out of ourselves that we possibly can. But it's all about enjoying it. it it's racing for results, but at the end of the day, we're doing this. For enjoyment, or in the case of professional riders, they want to be able to do it with a with a, with a kind of like a, a clean conscience. Um, the comments of it's David Miller uh, talking there. Okay, winning. Like I said, adapted from a, uh, a concept of Sir Clive Woodward this evening, um, and he's really taking it from his experiences in the business world. And he's a great believer that you can take a lot of things that happen in business and apply them into sport, um, particularly things like uh, team building. So, Woodward says, you know when you're winning, when? Well, obviously you've got more points on the scoreboard than your opponents. For us that means faster times on the scoreboard than, than all of our um, competitors. There are elite standards in core areas, and we'll talk a little bit later about what some of those core areas are. You've got a team that really clicks under pressure. I mentioned earlier about it's enjoyable and it inspires not only other team members but other people outside the sport or within the sport. There's real competition. It's not much fun when you're winning every single event and no one's coming close to you. It's nice to have that competitive edge. You also have a bit of an indication when your, your supporters and the, and the audience are, are clapping wildly. Um, not, I don't know if that's ever happened in, uh, in, in my experience, but uh, no, actually no, I don't yes, know. National, National 10 last year, there was a fantastic crowd, wasn't there, out watching, and uh, especially at the turn, it was really, really nice to have that, and that really brings something to the environment when you're racing with, a, with an audience and a, and a crowd around. But by really a performance your supporters <coughs> wildly, it's also, maybe not at the time that you're doing the performance, but also you're really appreciated and all the effort that you've put in is appreciated by the people around you. Consistency. It's good to be a top level performer, whatever that means to you, but doing it regularly, not these kind of flash in the pan performances. So, Woodward goes on to talk about a winning mindset. What's really important is this enjoyment. First and foremost, if this isn't fun, why do it? And I, now, and I, and I, I suppose really this um, applies more to amateur sport because we're, we're not getting, getting paid for, for what we do. Um, but even for professional riders, if they're not enjoying what they're doing, well, you know, why not go and try and, and find another job? Um, okay, things might change over time, but really we've all got choices to do this or not. We don't have to be doing what we're doing. You get one shot at life, why do this if it's not fun? Something else Woodward encourages is change thinking. Um, go to that quote, do what you've always done and you'll get what you've always actually got. Um, you know, it, it, it's good every now and again to reinvent yourself, to look at things that are slightly, uh, from a slightly different perspective. Um, you might want to try something new. Um, you've kind of all heard of that expression of lateral thinking, thinking out of the box. And that's what change thinking is, is really about. The next one Woodward talks about is critical non-essentials. And um, I did a prep, uh, presentation to you before about leaving no stern, stone unturned. It's about adding up all those 1% that could help improve your performance and committing to doing them. Dotting the I's, crossing the T's. And then that way, when you get to race day, you can sit on the start line and you can smile. Everything's been done. There's nothing more that you can possibly have done 
now's just a moment to, to enjoy the race. Learning how to build on success, and, and this is an interesting one because how often we all we all talk about oh what went wrong today? And if you had a bad performance, you think to yourself, what could I have done better? We all try and learn from mistakes. It's a common a common expression, isn't it? But how many of you actually think about learning from your successes? Why did it go wrong today? Why was it an excellent performance? Because by unlocking those kind of things, we can hopefully forecast it and we can repeat it. I like this one. Again, it, it looks a little bit more applicable to, to team sports where there really are two halves. But um, an interesting anecdote from this from um, Woodward's book is that um, what he would do is the, the team would come in from their first half performance, whether they're winning or losing, they'd come in and they'd put a clean shirt on. Because they want, Woodward wanted his players to go out feeling like the game had just started. So in other words, you draw a line o o o um, under what happened in the first half and you concentrate on what's ahead because you can't do anything that's behind you. I think, I think this is um, a useful one to think about in time trial, in particularly maybe in the longer distance events, you know, 50 miles, where you can really break down the race into different stages. And each stage of that race, 12 and a half mile or 25, uh, 25 mile marker, you, you race that part of the race and you don't think about what's gone and you don't think about what's, he what's ahead. It, it's, it's a good way to, to reignite motivation at different points within, within the race. Again, very obvious for, for team sports, um, but we, we've talked before, haven't we, about aligning values of the, 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 the team members with, with, with the management. Um, you know, it, it's all about being in harmony with, with each other. And, and, and that as individuals in endurance sport is also the case because you, know, you will be racing um, in teams, you will be doing team, team time trialling. But uh, you know, just a, a small example would just be, is this race important to all of you equally? Yeah, so it, 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 help, it helps make sure that you can go into that race performance being a little bit more settled because you know exactly what is expected of you. Um, and um, there's nothing, nothing left to chance. The final one, um, and I suppose this is where it really uh, relates mainly to, to elite sport, um, is this beyond number one concept.
<laughs> for me, and um, a lot of you know me well enough now to know that my opinion is that, okay, people might not consider them themselves elite, but really for me, elite is not just about performance level. It's also about the quality of the rider's experience. And I think we're all entitled to have an elite experience. I, I personally feel it's really fun to explore what we can do, getting out, of, uh, getting out, um, what we can get out of our mind and body, that potential. Um, and we as athletes have the opportunity to do this through the challenge of sport. Um, it's probably why a lot of us choose sport because you know, we, we, can, we can certainly excel in our jobs, we can certainly excel in our lifestyle. Um, sport is a very it's very quantifiable, you've got your goals and you can move towards goals and you can inspire yourself, you can inspire other people. So I think that's why sport appeals to people. I know everyone's talking about, you know, we're all on a journey these days, everyone's on a journey. Um, but it, I think it's probably one of the things where it really is process driven, not always has to be about the outcome at the end. Again, um, I did have another audio file for you to, to listen to, quite a long one, so this, this uh, talk will be shorter. Um, I can't remember everything that uh, Woodward says word for word, but I'll, I'll take you through some of the concepts. So, Woodward in the audio talks a little bit more about the, the detail in, in rugby. And he defines, in order to be winning in rugby, he defines seven key principles he wanted his players to focus on. And hang in there with me because after this I'm going to give you what I think are the seven winning tips for winning in cycling. Um, so it's my hook to make sure you stay here, is to, to tell you the secrets of the trade afterwards. So, in Woodward's opinion, defence was one of his key um, parameters to ensure winning in the England rugby team. Um, debatable maybe, for, for those of you that, that follow um, team games like football and rugby, but his idea is that if you had a solid defence you can never lose. Um, I'm not sure how I felt about this one because I don't see that as about winning, but I suppose in order to have a, an opportunity to win you, you can't be losing, so at least it rules out one of the um, permutations of the match. Um, he then talks about getting the basics right. You know, how many times have we had bad performances in a race because of a basic error. You know, I know I've certainly been on the start line and the timekeeper's holding me up and I, I, um, I'm, I'm trying to clip in and I, I back pedal to, to, to do that and I, my chain falls off. Going back to, to the rugby example, um, Woodward was very keen for his players to, to make, to be sure about the contact. So when they're tackling, make sure they're making good contact with other players. You know, it's no point going into a tackle half-hearted. He, he, he wanted to make sure that that initial contact was delivered well and meaningful, meaningfully. This one, probably applicable to, to most sporting situations, being able to, to, to play under pressure. He talks about um, teacup which is all about thinking correctly under, under pressure. Attack. So the self-control comes under, under here. So T, thinking correctly under pressure. Okay, and that's why the, these, two, these two can be linked. So not letting things like technique, etc., go under pressure, but also making sure you put pressure on the people. Self-control is more that mental approach to, to performance. Um, and I'm going to call it something slightly different or have a slightly different version in my, in my cycling version in, in a moment. And then leadership. Now, it might well be that you feel you don't have any um, association with leadership. You know, after all, you turn up to a race and you go out and you ride your bike and it's all about you. But there is that personal leadership, and maybe team time trialling um, is a good example of this. Um, you know, captain on the road, certainly in, in, in road racing as well. Um, but it's not just about leading other people, it's about leading yourself. 